choosing refractive targets. Plano is not always best. Disclosure, I published cataractcoach.com, a free teaching website. So here's the patient, minus 12, minus 11 of myopia, two and a half of astigmatism. Let's do this cataract surgery. So here's my technique, phaco chop in the capsule bag, split the nucleus so we can remove it. Let's speed up the video. The nucleus and cataract removal goes well, no issues at all, clean up all the cortex. Time to insert the IOL. There's the lens going in the capsule bag, dialing it into the correct meridian. Here's the post-op. Torque lens, beautifully centered and rotated to the correct axis. It very nicely balances out the cornea. Post-op refraction, right eye, plano. Left eye, plano. That's perfect, right? Well, not so fast. We're right on target, but the patient's not happy. Why? Well, the patient wears contacts, under corrects his prescription. He walks around minus one with the contacts. Does his computer work all day long? And he doesn't really mind the blurred distance vision, except when he plays golf every Saturday. So we've made the patient happy now because we've given him these plus one computer glasses with the anti-glare tint. And then also he enjoys the Plano OU for golf and he's retiring this year and he anticipates playing a lot more golf. So we've had to explain to the patient that this is better for his future. Lesson one, mild myopia is a gift, especially for myopic patients who like to use it to enhance their near vision tasks like computer work. Here's our next patient, small eye, high degree of hyperopia. This is a tough one. The lens calcs come back with 30 or more diopters for the lens power going to be tough. So let's show you the surgery. We're going to chop it in the capsule bag. This patient has a shallower anterior chamber, so we don't want to prolapse it out of the capsule bag. So chopping goes great. Let's speed up the rest of the case here. We'll get through the rest of the nucleus removal. Remember, these hyperopic eyes are small. Make sure you make a sufficiently large capsule rex, at least five millimeters, and chop in the bag so we can stay away from that shallow anterior chamber. Once that IOL goes in the eye, we'll dial it into position and the patient should do well. Now the lens calculations are tough because these small eyes are very difficult to determine where the lens will end up. What's the ELP, the effective lens position? And it's hard to determine exactly. So we went in doubt on these eyes, let's make sure we end up a little hyper. So if lesson two is hyperopes love distance vision. If they start out plus three or more, they'll love being plus a quarter but will probably hate being minus a half. Our next guy walks in with this prescription. He says, I hardly wear glasses, I see okay. There's the pre-op refraction, he's got cataracts now. You say, let's aim for Plano with a toric lens, I can get this to perfect Plano. And you calculate it out, you'll get great distance vision, but loss of near. So remember, the conoid is going to be collapsed. Pre-op, there are two focal points. Post-op, it's gonna be just that one Plano outcome. Increase the image quality, but we may decrease the depth of field. So here it is in plus sill. Let's convert it to a minus sill. Now it makes sense. At one axis, he has a zero prescription, and the other meridian, he's got a minus two. So those two focal points give him a very wide range of vision. So let's leave the patient with a minus one spheric equivalent and give him a non-toric lens. And now he's gonna be happy. And now we'll insert the non-torque lens with that minus one post-op goal. So very nice outcome for this patient. And our take-home lesson number three, astigmatism can be okay. Some patients have what I call astigmatism of the brain. And they prefer to see with more depth but less image quality. That's what they're used to. And our last patient, here we go. He says, I just can't see well enough. Time for some Google homework. And he figures out that he can get perfect vision and x-ray vision and be young again. And he says, I'll pay you whatever you want, but I want absolute perfection. Please, doctor. So we under-promise and he says, okay, let's do the diffractive trifocal lens and I can live with the compromises. Important, let's analyze his angle alpha, which is the distance between the visual axis and the optical center. And even more importantly, the angle kappa. That's the distance between the visual axis and the pupil center. You want those to be almost the same. In the picture right here, that's too far apart. This is a much better one. In this patient, the pupil center and the visual axis are nearly identical, optical center too. So now he's happy, I have a pretty wide range of vision without glasses. And the night vision glare and halos aren't too bad. Trifocal lens targeting, what do we want to target? Well, ideal goal is gonna be Plano. 
if you end up myopic, even just a little bit, you probably won't be happy. You'll say the distance vision's blurry. So this is the perfection goal, plano, plano, plano. But even if they end up a little hyperopic, it's better than ending up myopic. So he says, thank you, I'm so happy with the new vision. Life is good. So here we go. Faco chop in the capsule bag. This is his surgery. We're gonna implant our trifocal lens. And the key here is when you insert it, to line it up and center it with respect to the Purkinje images. The first Purkinje image is the reflection off the anterior surface of the cornea. That fourth Purkinje image is the flipped reflection off the posterior aspect of the IOL. Line both of those up with the visual axis. So lesson four, Plano to slight hyperopia for trifocal IOLs and choose patients with small angle alpha and angle kappa. Thanks for your attention, and you can have all 1,000 of my videos for free at cataractcoach.com.